the original Scudder Falls Crossing was a bridge that was constructed in 1959 and opened up in 1961 with the completion of the approaches on the, both the New Jersey and the uh, Pennsylvania side. When the original bridge was constructed, this was a very rural place. There are many communities. Uh, the folks here were on the Pennsylvania side in Yardley and in Mercer County on the New Jersey side that then became commuters to other areas for work. The communities became more affluent essentially over the decades from the early 60s until now because of some of the opportunities created by the original bridge. So we basically had a 60 plus year old bridge uh, that had reached the end of its useful life. The old bridge or the, the bridge that we replaced, uh, in addition to age, had uh, many issues with the entrances and exits to the bridge, uh, really non-conforming. Uh, we had traffic backups, uh, condition of the bridge deck was in a terrible state of repair, and uh, probably uh, very importantly, there was a structural design element of the bridge. It's essentially non-redundant structurally. Uh, essentially two major beams on the exterior of the structure held up the bridge. And if one of those beams failed, uh, the whole bridge failed. I was the RA for the demolition of the original bridge. The commission decided to replace that structure, the New Jersey portion, the Pennsylvania portion, and the Main River Bridge, all under one contract. Just the magnitude of it, you know, we've, we've, we've built bridges, we've, we've widened roadways, it's all that type of work, so it's, it's just a matter of maintaining traffic and meeting all the environmental restrictions and uh, finishing the project on time. The project is uh, about 4.4 miles long. Um, what the original design concept was is that we would widen the bridge and have three through lanes, uh, increasing the capacity of the bridge so that peak period rush hour backup that happened every morning and every evening wouldn't occur. The footprint of the new bridge, essentially, we've got two structures. There's one upstream, one downstream. When you actually widen a bridge, you have to widen the adjoining highways on both sides of the bridge and essentially taper them down to a two-lane condition in either Pennsylvania and New Jersey. So it, it, it basically took uh, essentially an exit or two exits in New Jersey and one exit in Pennsylvania to, to accomplish that. Our main goal is to finish on time and as less disruption to the traveling public as we can have and hopefully uh, everybody's happy with the final product. First of all, it's putting a coffer dam, originally a box, in the river that allows you to get below the water level, the water is pumped out of it, and then we begin the foundation work for the river, which involves drilling shafts into the rock below the river and constructing shaft foundations to support the piers in the river and on land. So after that, we put a footing in the river on top of the shafts, and once the footing was complete, we would put uh, the pier columns in. Each pier has two columns. From there, after the columns were poured, we'd pour a cap on top of the column. And then from there, we set structural steel. We have seven girders going across the river. On top of that, we put metal deck pans. Then after all the rebar was installed, we would pour the bridge decks. We're building the first stage and maintaining the traffic on the existing bridge. And then once a new bridge is, is built, we can switch the traffic over 
so they'll always be able to maintain two lanes. So we took, we built the upstream structure first, as well as all the approach roadway work in both states. Brought that up, opened that up, and we were able to switch traffic in both directions onto that single upstream structure. As soon as we were able to put traffic on the southbound bridge, we began demolition of the old bridge. That took several months. So there, the demolition begins obviously from the top down. You know, we, we start taking off the parapets, we take off the deck sections, and, and at the same time, we can't let any debris fall in the river. We then remove the steel structure, the old steel structure, which was two main girders. And after those were removed, we went on and demolished the granite-faced piers that were in the river. The piers were in great shape, and uh, I hope the granite from them goes on to live somewhere else uh, in another project somewhere. The steel all, will all be melted down and probably made into more steel, whether that be cars or structural steel. Uh, but all steel like that does get does get recycled and, and reused. Once certain aspects were out of the way, we were able to begin construction, and a lot of that was construction in the river. And the river construction has four piers in the river, two piers on land, and two abutments, one in Pennsylvania, one in New Jersey. There are many complexities when building in a river, and a lot of the environmental considerations for the bridge had competing environmental interests that had to be avoided. Um, we had uh, essentially environmental restrictions for in-water work, tree cutting restrictions. We have a river that changes levels very fast. We have a lot of uh, permit requirements where we can't work in the river in certain periods of time during the year because of uh, endangered species. And all of those essentially overlapped. So it really pushed the construction team to really focus on when those in-water restrictions would go into place in each calendar year. That in itself had to be built into the schedule. And once, you, once the contractor comes on and figures out construction methodology, he's got to figure out, he or she's got to figure out how they're going to get that done within the river. You're using a work platform in the river, also known as the Trestle Causeway. Uh, that was an environmental consideration, but it was really the only way to construct the bridge. Additionally, this is a very active river. This, this river can go up and down by as much as 10, 12 feet uh, in a heavy rainstorm. You get tornadoes or, or heavy rainstorms upriver. A lot of times the way those storms come in, they basically hit the entire river all the way up to the New York border. On a construction project with thousands of tasks, you're normally uh, focused on many, many tasks at once, but the team and you know, due to the environmental restrictions, was kind of singularly focused on making sure that those inner milestones were met. And once they were met, the, the larger schedule fell into place. On either side of our bridge is an interchange, major interchange with state roads on Pennsylvania and New Jersey side. But we did have some, some bad accidents on the bridge because of the geometry of it, it wasn't wide enough. So we have called auxiliary lanes. They're additional lanes to the through lanes. The roundabouts near the approaches to the uh, interchange in New Jersey have basically eased the traffic flow along that Route 29 corridor. The entrances uh, to the bridge have acceleration lanes. There are deceleration lanes that are essentially separate lanes from the main lines of traffic. So you can uh, either accelerate onto the bridge or decelerate off of the bridge safely. Um, from a safety perspective, that's terrific. Early on in the project, through the design process, there was a strong advocacy for a bike and pedestrian lane on the bridge. Uh, it's a 10 foot wide path that both bicyclists and pedestrians can use simultaneously. It was uh, a component of the project, um, but what it did as it, as it started to be constructed and we actually started to contemplate what it would mean for these two communities. So this new shared use path ties both of those in. Uh, in together, so it gives a nice loop between folks parking up river and then coming down and they're able to come across our bridge. And this is our only crossing where, where cyclists can ride their bike across the river. 
Um, we have a trailhead facility that we've done a historic adaptation of a, of a historic building, the adaptive reuse of that building to service the trailhead. Electronic toll collection has been going very well. Uh, it's an all electronic tolling system, which was the first of its kind with the commission. The Bridge Commission is solely funded by the toll revenues that it collects. We use those funds in a targeted way and a responsible way. We were able in 2011 to have a toll adjustment that essentially funded the abilities for us to have cash reserves to begin this project. It was really a commuter friendly or user friendly construction methodology because a lot of the work was really done offline. It didn't impact traffic to a great extent. Uh, once we got that first structure open upstream, our commuting traffic realized much more free-flowing operations. So there were a lot of people that were happy halfway through construction. And now that we've got the, the new bridge built, uh, on, you know, the downstream bridge, that was also a, you know, an offline, really didn't impact traffic uh, to a great degree. I've heard people say, I can't believe it's done already. And we've been going at it since 2017, but the people are amazed at how quick, how quick it went. It's always a good feeling when you get, you get to the point where you build something that will last a long time and that people will get to use. A lot of people will get to use this project for a very long time.